Hello everyone, it's Richard Lewis here with Sam and we are doing the promised celebratory video uh, for going past 100k subs. We did it, Sam. We did it. And it's been a struggle and we'll talk about that in a second. Uh, but yeah, just what a fucking ridiculous situation to to find myself in we couldn't be asked to do anything that special for it it is only 100k and while we appreciate the support we'll get into why you know it's fucking ridiculous still uh, or views are down no one gets our videos but let's talk about it let's talk about getting 100k most people like to do i don't know something really celebratory don't they when they get to 100k i did promise i'd tell a story i am gonna tell a story sam's here to laugh at that story but let's talk about why it's been such a crazy slog like do you remember the good old days when we first started this and we had like eighteen thousand subscribers um we were putting videos out and it, they'd get like forty thousand, fifty thousand views we would always get more views and subscribers in the channel you know our videos always used to find their way to the audience we wanted to find them to. And when we started doing the podcast and talking about things that weren't just esports related, that all got a pretty good response as well. You know, when we did videos on like Harambe and the Pepe stuff, all of that really was getting 50,000. Dildos. 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 Yeah, we did it all. And then weird shit started happening on the channel, didn't it? Once we went political. It was weird. It was weird how it went from being this slow, steady growth, big explosion, right about the time of the Phantom Lord story, sure. Um, but, you know, it was it was pretty much like that, apart from that big spike. But then what started happening was once we were sort of doing the political stuff, we used to get messages every day saying people were unsubbed. Or that they had to resub to us multiple times. I had a guy message me literally like two, three days ago saying, "I've congratulations on the hundred k. I've resubbed to your channel six times, six times." And on top of that, we then started noticing that people weren't just getting unsubbed; they weren't getting told when our videos were going out. And incredibly. As our sub numbers were going up and up and up, our views got cut in half. Abs I, literally just in half. Almost as if there was some sort of algorithm doing it where you didn't go out to your subs in 50% of the ca cases to sort of keep vi videos in a limited state. I'm sure YouTube would never do that, Sam. I'm sure they wouldn't do that to people. I mean, it's a fair and egalitarian platform, isn't it, where everyone gets a, a voice and, and has the right to... To say whatever they they want, and and to have f for you as an audience to watch whatever you want. YouTube's defining value that is, but it's just weird, just weird how it started happening. And if if you want to look at this yourself, go back and look at some earlier episodes of the show and look at the numbers, and you'll be like, wow, yeah, it's weird, isn't it? How it went from ooh getting around about forty thousand to getting around about twenty thousand, just despite more subs, and again messaged every day. People saying, oh, yeah, I didn't get your last five videos that you put out. Because we, we put out about five a week on average. So it's been an unbelievable struggle to get to the, oh, shit, I haven't even got to the, the best bit, have I? Um, every time we put a video out, we would lose 20 to 100 subs. So we had to hope the video got to a place where it would be offset with a net game so like a reddit post where people had never seen us before or talking about a new game or a new topic and and demonetization sam now i, I know you love to talk about money so i'll definitely bring you in for this do you remember do you remember when we used it, to get it was like a good four months like it's still shit now but do you remember when yeah. it first happened? There was like three months of just pure uh, no money dot com. Like it was like two hundred oh, yeah. quid. We'd put out yeah. twenty videos in a month. We were shoot two hundred quid, split that in half, hundred pound each. Sound. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I do I've done that. eighty hours of work for hundred quid. <laughs> yeah. Um. But but I mean, you remember there was a good period, wasn't there? there oh, was yeah. A good period. There was a good period at the start. Yeah. And then. When the when when the adpocalypse, as it was called, come in, we got fucked by Game that. Off. Like you said, yeah, it it was down to literally pennies. 
on the channel. And then when they revised their ad policy, now what happens to us is every video we make starts in a demonetized state. So what we do is we put a video out. It's a topical video. You come in and watch it if YouTube allows you to know we've put the video out or hasn't unsubbed you. You watch it, and there's no ads. And then we put out another video and another video and another video. And by that point, the appeal we made for this video goes through, but no one's watching it. So it, it, our videos generally generate no ad revenue. And trust me, Sam slathers them in ads. He loves oh, it. Man. Much love to everyone who does watch them, like, because I put about seven. My general rule is it one every 25 minutes, which I think is reasonable. Go on. TV shows do it, what, every 12 minutes? If you're watching an American sports show every 30 yeah. seconds? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, exactly. Oh, I'm reasonable. I'm giving you long content, a couple of ads spiced in there. Yeah. Reasonable. And, and, you know, they're not intrusive. They don't st We put the little ones that just pop up, don't we, like, uh, at the bottom. Yeah, that one and the skippable ones. The yeah, skippable yeah, all the like skippable five ones. We don't, yeah, we don't use the high premium and skippable ads. I think so, YouTube does, though. I think sometimes you just don't choose. I think sometimes they just put them on. So maybe they do. If you do, yeah. unlucky, cheers, nice guy, probably earned a quid from you. Nice guys. <laughs> So, so anyway, uh, you know, and uh, it was in and the, the worst part is while all of this was happening to our channel and YouTube are denying it and they've denied it publicly and have denied it to me privately saying it definitely isn't happening. You're all psychotic. You're all imagining these things that are happening. It's, it's a lie guys. All the people who've messaged me saying that you're unsubbed. YouTube says you're lying. You're playing a trick on me. They publicly made a statement saying we wouldn't unsub anybody. Uh, that's not what the YouTube experience is about yet. I, I said, I get about, you know, half a dozen people message me every week saying, wow, they've, uh, I've been unsubbed and many, many more that say they don't get the videos anymore. And then they say, oh, but you haven't clicked on the bell. That's why you don't get the videos anymore. I mean, the bell shouldn't exist. Yeah. I mean, the, b the thing is, you're supposed to get things to your sub box, no matter if you click yeah. the bell or not. I think the bell gives you like email notifications and pop up notifications. Mm. It should still be in the but, sub box. But then they said that then they say, oh, no, 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 it's the bell. It's the you know, you got to click the bell. So, you know, and, and then people say, but look, I've got the bell clicked and they'll show me screenshots. There was that one time where I said, the net, I mean, this will immediately fuck the video up. There was that one time, like, I didn't make any, we never made any videos about Anita Sarkeesian, really. We just sort of had a little bit of a laugh at it, didn't we? You That's know, because, but we never made any videos. Nah, it was no big, like, expose. Like, yeah, who gives a fuck? Who gives a fuck? She's doing feminist critique of games and is doing it in an incredibly selective and cherry-picked way. It has no academic value. I never really understood the people who would just make, ah, oh, and you never guess what Anita Sarkeesian said today. Yeah, she's doing it to get a rise out of you. Just fucking, you let that one pass and fuck. I never jumped on that train. But the one time we mentioned her in a video, that video disappeared. <laughs> it disappeared out of the channel. People were messaging oh, me yeah, going, I remember that. Yeah, people message me going, you, I can click on the video if you directly link me to it, but it's not on your channel. It, it's not showing in your feed. And we're like, uh, so I message you, and oh, it's just a, an error. Just a, just a coincidence that somebody who's on like Twitter and, and you know YouTube's like trusted flagger program, it's just a coincidence that you mentioned their name around about the same time they're putting an algorithm that detects, detects words into your videos. It's just all a big coincidence, Rich. You're mega fucking paranoid. You're just paranoid, mate. You've done too much beak and you've and lost your, your fucking... Yeah, your box is gone. You've blown your box out with beak. beak How does it, it feel? So, so listen, um, obviously there's a context all this. I didn't just want to have a 100k video that moan. <laughs> yeah, fuck you too. Fuck you all for subbing. But no, we'll definitely fuck you <laughs> I mean, 100% fuck YouTube. Um, uh, but, but this is where I'm going to bring it all back, Sam, and give everyone a warm, fuzzy feeling. The, the reality is the only reason we're on this platform is for the subs and the audience we reach. It's not for the money. It's not because I think YouTube's a good platform, because it objectively isn't. Uh, YouTube doesn't treat gamers, its core audience, with any respect or reverence whatsoever. Um, it, it, it demonetizes some of its best content creators for no reasons whatsoever. Uh, it seems more interested in promoting fringe things over uh, you know, addressing its core audience and viewership. And it lies publicly all of the fucking time. 
YouTube's a terrible company with terrible corporate goals, and it's become actually a fucking chore and a pain in the balls to content creators. It only exists because, well, it you know, it, there aren't any competitors, sure, but the only reason people continue to put videos up on YouTube, all of your favorite content creators, us included, is because you you guys already exist on this platform. And trust me, if there's ever a platform that eclipses YouTube, and it, obviously there will be one day, we all need to go there. And I hope we all do. But for now, we're all here. And we have 100,000, now 100,212 at the time of recording this video, by the way. Nice. We just, we took two years to go from like... 95 what, to 100. Yeah, no, not even that, like 98 or something to 100K. Like, it was just like, what's... And now it's just, our oh, fuck it, they've done it. They also didn't email me to say congratulations on the hundred k. This is how you get your, uh, your silver play button. <laughs> that no email, just none. But they just send um, it out, mate. Yeah. So look, uh, obviously, it's all about you guys, the audience. It's why we do what we do. It's why we do the podcast. It's why we make the videos we make. We want to keep you informed about things we think you need to know. Which, sure, it can be esports, it can be politics, it can be tech. Whatever I feel is important to put out in the public domain and take a stance against. And sometimes, yeah, we just like to have fun and meme around and do some comedy stuff and make you have a fucking good time and forget about all of your woes and all of your shit. And, you know, we're going to do as a special, as a follow-up to this, because this might seem a little bit negative. We're going to do a follow-up, you know, Richard's wholesome mailbag, because I get a lot of fan mail, to, to which really tempers the hate that we get and the threats that we oh, get. Oh, yeah, we get some detailed, like, nice messages. Yeah, At least for the real. shitty messages are usually just so dumb you could ignore them. So we're going we're gonna to present some of those so you understand you know and we'll redact names and stuff but you understand that you know we we're cognizant of how important the work is but as i said the best compliment i ever get on a daily basis from you guys is always listen i work this job i don't like it because who likes working for the fucking man right and and i i download your fucking uh, podcast or i listen to it on Podbean or itunes and it makes my day go quicker and better or if I'm driving somewhere, I listen to you guys. And we know we've got viewers who go back and listen to all our old stuff. And we think it stands the test of time. And it gives us a good feeling that maybe if we go to 200K one day, there's going to be this body of work we did, which we can feel proud of. And people are going to go back and look at it. And every day we're going to reach somebody new uh, and, and make that difference, right? Because at the end of the day, life can be a tedious grind. It is for most of us. And anything that breaks up that mundanity, I think, is a, is a good thing. And it's nice to hear that. And it's nice to put something out that people enjoy uh, that contributes to that. So definitely mad props and, and thank you to all of you who sub, who continually resub, who follow us on Twitter, who donate on Patreon for By the Numbers, uh, to the people who've you know donated on when we live stream on Twitch. Uh, thank you. And of course, you know, the one thing that we're really, really proud of as well is we did this together. I met Sam through my agent at the time, not my agent now, um, when he was working at WME IMG, it's William Morris Endeavor. And I was um, one of the biggest talent agencies in the world. And I was one of their few esports clients. And I needed a producer because my last two producers had been poached. You know, because they were talented motherfuckers and went on to bigger and better. Why the, was that a reason I'm still here or something? Well, to be fair, you know, the show would be the same without you now, would it? You're part of the furniture. Oh, yeah, I, I, true, man. You have to give up my 50% yeah. for life. No, no. Gone too deep. You could have got rid of me by 50 episodes once you go past 100. You fucked it. Yeah. It'll be stuck in it, but um, but again, one of the other popular questions we always get is like, how did you and Sam meet? Because you know, there's an assumption, because you know, yeah. we both lived in Port Tall, but we must have met there, right? Well, nah, <laughs> nah. In fact, we're about uh, ten years apart from that, mate. Yeah, yeah, t exactly. So, um, it, it, what happened was, I said I needed a producer, and they had this kid called Sam, apparently, um, who was He's doing a super all of genius, that. everything. Just fucking changing, changing the world of esports, man. Single-handedly, 
Yeah, they didn't really frame it like that. Oh, they, just, right. they just said, there's this kid called Sam and we make him do everything. We make <laughs> make him do everything and we won't do all the shit work so i was like all right well can he press buttons and and you know press is a fuck old button man yeah to be fair they did say that they said this motherfucker <laughs> press a good button and they said oh he's got he's got a really strange fucking accent though you know we can barely understand him half the time i was like oh really where's he from and he went oh wales and i laughed immediately uh because you know i was like how the fuck can you not under you know what i mean yeah. like, i say, like, oh i don't think i'll have any problems with that so they put us together, and as has been done in our, some of our videos, you know, we've referenced that Sam came on, and it just sort of clicked from there, you know? It wasn't an immediate click where we sort of got to speed of, like, bouncing yeah, back well, and forth. the thing is, I never told you this, but before I worked with you, I used to watch your videos, and I used to watch Unfiltered. So when I first came on, I was pretty nervous, because I knew, like, at the time, you were still doing, like, we didn't do any politics stuff. It was still, like, serious journalism. I was like, oh, fuck, it's going to be some hardcore shit, this is. So and like, for, unfortunately, it was trash talk. So <laughs> yeah, exactly. Wrong. That's what I mean. For the first episode of trash talk, people like I think it was in one of the best ofs. Not really talking that much, and my accents like way uh, cleaner. Trying to do like a broadcast voice. Yeah, and like you say, you know, you've got, you've got on doing casting stuff and and all sorts now. So um, yeah, it's been it's been big for both of us. Like for me, I've always said it. I think the most important work I do is the work I sort of do, not the not paid work it's like the youtube videos we put out it's the stuff i put up on my website it's the stories i write that's the stuff that really you know matters to me um and and the stuff i'll always sort of be most proud of i think when i eventually one day do retire and or shuffle off this mortal coil uh so it, it's it's been a blast it's it's been good and i think from this point of 100k I'm cautiously optimistic, Sam, that we will continue to snowball from this point. And I mean snowball as in to get bigger and bigger, yeah. not snowball as in Downwards. the sex. All right. Oh, okay. no, no, not that either. No. Um, and, and yeah, and I, and I think it'll be good. I think, I, think, uh, I think the future's bright. I think 2018 might be our year. I used to know this crazy motherfucker, a guy called Ben. And um, he, uh, he, he was really wild. He... he he started taking crack to kick his heroin habit. Not the greatest swap. I mean, it, it, he said it worked. <laughs> but anyway, no, he's a crackhead. Or... He used to... Um, oh, no, he got rid of that too. Oh, so there we go. He, 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 used, he used gaming to kick his crack addiction. There we go. Sound reasonable. Yeah, it worked yeah. out in the end. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, but, right. But anyway, and um, he always used to have this thing where he would say, you know, he would say what the year was going to be. So, and he would stick to it that whole year. So, you know, like I think in 2007, he goes, 2007 is the year of the winner. And he never really qualify what that meant. Yeah. And then you know, 2008 would be year of the veteran, you know, and things like this. Right. <laughs> so I think 2018 is, is definitely going to be the year of whatever we are, the, the <laughs> year of the podcast. I'm a strong believer in just the method of showing up every day, mate, putting in a new graft. I believe if we just keep showing up, keep putting in the graft, they will right. come. Build it and they will come. Podcast of dreams. So I'm going to pour a bourbon. It's one of the worst bourbons I've ever tasted, by the way. I bought this when I was uh, – I, I just wanted to try it, and it had a cool-sounding name, Old Forester, but it, it's awful. It Do not like recommend it. Yeah, don't have anything better, unfortunately, and we need to toast in the 100K officially and tell the 100K story. That's what everyone's been wanting to hear. Right, so without any further ado, and Sam, you, you, you better laugh and make this story good because I've built it up now. I know, I was going right. to say, this is going to be a fucking hard uh, level to achieve, man. We'll see. have been holding this on for two years. Right, so uh, back when I used to live uh, in St. Melons near Cardiff, I used to date this girl. She was fucking great. I really spent a lot of time with her. Loved it a bit. It's one of one of the one of the ones you save and remember oh, all your got life. Away. No, no, no. She, she's not the one who got away because I, I, we were together. So by definition, no, she didn't get eventually anything. broke up. Yeah, but you broke yeah, up. Yeah, yeah, eventually. Yeah. yeah, eventually. And you know, she went on to bigger and better things. You know, she wanted to study law, and she felt, you know, whatever the fuck I was doing was an <laughs> impingement to her career. Which is a recurring thing. But anyway, she, uh, we, we spent a lot of time living together. And there was a period of time where we lived with her parents uh, in St. Melons. 
when we, you know, couldn't get a place together or whatever. Now, her stepdad, a guy called Clive, uh, used to work as a mortician. And you can fucking imagine, right? A small fucking little hell. dude. And he was he he was a really polite motherfucker. This guy was one of the most polite guys you'd ever meet. Didn't like swearing, didn't like cursing, it's didn't like really do a lot of it. Right, yeah, but he but he would he would say if you want to swear, you know, you, you can do it down the pub with a lad. You can go out and have a drink, and you can swear down the pub with the boys, and that's fine. But you know, you don't do it in in the house, and you don't do it at work, and you you know whatever. Yeah, so pretty old school guy. Loads of people from the previous generation, like that, aren't they? Yeah, you know they 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 think that it's something that you know for working men's environment or whatever. But the crazy thing about Clive was, despite this. Uh, view on swearing he would tell the maddest stories over dinner because he would talk <laughs> about his, he would talk about his work right so we'd be there like just having dinner and he'd go oh you never fucking get well yeah what do you preach your rules clive <laughs> like, you, you, you never guess what happened today rich and I, oh what's, what's that clive uh, well we had it we had a dwarf come in this is a real story told by the way we had a dwarf come in today on a on on the slab, and the thing was, he tried he tried to kill himself. He had by lying down on the train tracks. But the thing was, he was so small, the train just went over him, and it just sliced the top of his head off. You see? And his toes. <laughs> and and, and you be and like, you know, you took it into dinner. You know what I mean? You'd be like, oh, re- really? Nice like, misses. Yeah. Oh, how terrible it was. He was in the ambulance screaming, apparently holding his own brain in. <laughs> 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 this isn't even the story by the way this is just this is context right so you'd be like oh yeah that's, that's a that's a nice one that's a good one clive and he went so oh, poor little bugger and all this you know and uh i think bugger was allowed so anyway um he would just tell all these mad stories and one time me and him were down the boozer and he told me a story that had me absolutely creased so much so I incorporated it into a stand-up act. It was a go-to story I always could go to to get me out of trouble if I was losing the audience because it's so absurd. It's so ridiculous. So uh, one of the things you have to do when you're like an attending like mortician is occasionally you'll have to work a night shift. And, and gen- obviously, if you're in a small part of Wales or whatever, you know, not a lot of people are dying in the middle of the night or, you know, yeah. not many people are sending bodies up to the m- morgue to be, you know, fucking autopsied or whatever in the middle of the night but it would happen on occasion you know uh i think sometimes victims of crime would have to go up there road accident if you needed uh, a cause of death pretty quick that you would get bodies sent up in the middle of the night so what would happen was you would you would find yourself alone at night in the morgue scared and yeah right and here's the (laughs) thing we're scared yo people don't tell you this about bodies Bodies make noises, dude. Oh, yeah, like, all the fluids and shit. Yeah. yeah. So you've got a body like out on a slab, and it's, you know, even in the hermetically sealed environment of a morgue, it's coming up to room temperature. They fart all the time. They, they, they literally fart, like <laughs> gases escaping, leaking out. And scariest of all the, is the acid. Uh, occludes in parts of the body. Sometimes they'll spontaneously oh. cramp and like start to sit up and stuff. Like sometimes a leg will go or a knee will go, but sometimes literally they'll just start to like arch yeah, up. Yeah, like, their abdomen will start going. Yeah. And obviously this is fucking horrendous, you know, but it's something you just get used to and you got to have a gallows humor at work in this environment. Anyway, so they had this new guy um, come in and you, they're gonna prank him right like because that's what you do and he's super fucking nervous and you know they're telling him like oh you know you're gonna uh, if a body comes up don't worry about it um you know you just uh you'll you'll get it in a bag you just unzip it um you know look at the tag fill in this form on the clipboard and uh if you want you know you can autopsy it tomorrow or whatever and and oh there's milk in the fridge they used to keep their milk in the refrigerator where the bodies come out <laughs> Right, just milk in there randomly. Um, and, you know, they were just talking this new kid all the way through it. But obviously they're going to prank him. So what they decide to do is one of the, the one of Clive's mates is in the fucking body bag, right? And this new trainee kid's in there. 
and he's like fucking, you know, nervous as fuck, on edge. He gets the bag, he unzips it, and of course they're going, Aah! like fucking really. And this kid's fucking absolutely shit himself. <laughs> as you he's gone, he's still crying, Sam. Because you know, even though he's a fucking fully trained mortician, like zombies and vampires and the living dead fuck people up in ways that you can't legislate for. And you're just opening a body bag, expecting a dead person, and they've gone for the full arms out zombie grab, like. This guy's like full of, he's like crying, he's like hyperventilating, and the fella's like getting out the bag going, Oh, you are right, birds, you are right. It's just a bit of banter. We do it with all of the lads, we do it with all of them, <laughs> we do it with all the new ones. And he's like, oh, having like a full blown panic attack, right? So it takes 20 minutes for this motherfucker to calm down. And he says, Oh, fuck. Oh, you got me good. You got me good, you bastard. So can I fucking if, just promise me one thing? If, if we ever, ever have a guy join the team in the future let me be the guy in the bag right. let me be the one playing Get the prank the revenge and he goes all right all right nice one yeah totally totally so then months go by like months and months and months and months like, you know, and then they say to the fellow like oh here you go mate we've got a new guy joining the team nice. it's your it's your turn you're up to the plate right so the guy's like fucking blind in, right? He, he goes, right, what do I need to do? And he went, oh, well, we're going to do it a little bit differently now, right? So it's uh, it's 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 going to be late. He's going to be working the night shift just like you were, just like we all were when it happened to us. Uh, but we're going to put you in the uh, refrigerator. We're going to put you in the, the on the slab. The slab yeah. yeah, and and, and he, we're going to tell him, oh, you you got to do it in there and open it up in there. And he's going to come and open it up. And when he opens you up, you jump at him. And he goes, fucking, all right, cool. So he he, he, he they, they open the fucking slab and he gets on and they push him in. Now here's something I didn't know. This story actually educated me. You know them, uh, f like say the the row of slabs yeah, where they yeah. keep all. The There's no dividers. Oh, you can see all the bodies. Yeah. Oh no, man. There's no partitions between them. So he's in there and they're like, right, he'd be on in about ten minutes. Just you know. It'll be a bit cold, but you're all right. It'll pull you straight out, right? So he's like lying there, and he's looking to his left, and it's just a row of fucking dead bodies. He looks to his right. There's a row of dead oh bodies, God. and this motherfucker's getting the fear immediately. <laughs> like, it's like, what if, what if they don't fucking let me out? Yeah, like, what? Yeah, I'd be but mad I, paranoid. I, yeah, he's full on, just sweating cobs, like even though he's in this fucking refrigerator surrounded by bodies. So he's lying there waiting for this guy to come. And what feels like an eternity's gone by and no motherfucker he can't even hear any noise outside. He's like, fucking hell. And he's just lying there and he's starting to get a bit agitated. And the body on his right turns around and goes, It's fucking cold in here, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> they fucked him up oh, twice. Oh my god. Twice mate. Oh, <laughs> fucking imagine that! Oh, Miss, I'm never working in the morgue again. Done. So, anyway, when Clive told me that, mate, I was fucking buckled. That is like one of the <laughs> stories for the ages. Um, it's just so fucking good. I wish it was my story. I wish it happened to me, but it's not. But I'm sure Clive won't mind me hijacking it and spreading it because uh, Clive should have been on fucking stage he was a, he was a hell of a dude so there you go that is the morgue story that's the 100k story i've been building up to all this time we've been teasing you with it there it is um but anyway the main point of the video is uh just thanks very much for subbing and supporting the channel supporting me and sam supporting all we do uh we're going to be a bit more active in 2018 we got some big plans lined up we got some new merchandise coming out we got all sorts of cool stuff to tell you about so make sure you stay sub don't let youtube fuck you up We'll tell you all about it in the coming weeks. Thanks once again. We'll see you on the next video.